It means that Mango is the only one left arriving in 1v3. Now, he has some intel. He also gets the first kill. This has to be played well. He knows that one's on the repel behind him, so he knows that if he stays safe from that window, if he even can get the one in the window, he's actually going to go all aggressive on it. 12 seconds left to go. Unica will have to push Mango here. This is all on Unica. The swing's going to come through, and Rody somehow is going to win that one in the middle of a repel, and Albush gets the start that they wanted. The fact that time is on your side, and eventually, if you keep yourself alive, you will be able to get a couple of kills as a push comes in. Now we're into the final 20 seconds and Junica, he's gonna drop and find himself a kill over onto Ambush Yuki. He has the Alda, he has to go pretty big here. He's able to find himself a couple of kills along with Taran. They've got a wide ping as to where the last player is. A brilliant pinch there by Riddle. One versus four. The attackers know where he's gonna be coming from. An ambush they are not going to give away anything here they have the plan down and there is no reason for them to progress they're even still holding vertical cover and go could pad his stats with an exit frag here as he does over onto defele but as time continues to tick, it's just going to get more and more difficult. Unica puts him out of his misery there. Assassin's going to try and go and peek that. It's going to take a little bit of damage, though. And Yuki's just waiting inside of prep. Falls back, stays alive, and knows the time is in his hands. And they have three defenders. Oh, Kilius now is two. If Kilius is the clutch this, it would be nothing less than an, a great individual performance, but it's going to be Yuki to shut him down. Keep in mind, one of them is a Monty, so he will be walking in. The ping's coming through, knows that the player's playing just behind the desk here, and somehow they haven't won that gunfight yet. It's because someone's going to try to plant a Yuki on the swing here on the repel. Unica's all of a sudden in a pincer here. He's going to have to win his gunfight. He does, and it's a 1v1 between Mango and Unica. Unica's going to have to try and chase him with a pistol. The camera's out, so he will know exactly where he is for the pistol fight, and it's all down to the Unica is gonna win it! Um, but yeah, four C4s. Fishy's gonna try and fish a little bit with this one, though. Waiting for the hatch to be open so we can toss a C4. It's actually pre-placed it, counting down. Let's see if we can get it. He does! It's a big one! It's the Scotsman! Well, not really. I mean, the operator of Scottish Yuki is not, though, but he's gonna be thinking, what the heck did my sledgehammer just land on? Because that just blew up in my face. Ambush, we're really not gonna bring the buck. They have essentially lost most of their soft breach. They don't have any breach charges, and Roman, he's gonna go fishing as well. It's like, oh, I see you fishing the Finnish lakes. They also want to fish. Go fish. And he gets another one for himself. Gets Rody. Oh, uh, Rody gets to kill me. Sorry. And then already, this is... It just smells of an ambush win. And like you said, I mean, it's always fun to interview Kilius, but this time... We're going to have to do it while everyone but against a kill is 3 for 3 <laughs> thus far. I don't know what you feed the Finnish lads, but they're used to fishing. 20 seconds left. Not a lot of time really to try and Ooh. push on through here. Assassin, great shot onto Rody. I have no idea how he stayed alive. Hey. Fishy, he's going to find the final two. It's going to be GG to Ambush. They're going to be coming away with the win tonight here on Cafe against Riddle. It, it it's It's not the best of times. When you're playing, it doesn't matter if you're playing with a lot of fire rate or a strong gun, if you have a shotgun blast to the face. Or or in Tiger's case, five shotgun blasts to the face. They're going to go for an attic push here instead, and Tiger's not going to be facing him off. He's actually going to injure with a shotgun. No, it's going to be Messi, and there he go! The shotguns run supreme, and Stata will be kicking themselves, thinking like, why didn't I think of this before? I mean, you get a little bit worried. Vios is actually going to take the opening damage here. It's going to be Drader playing on site, and Vios is going to find that opening kill. And here we go. This might be the opening that they we were spoking of. But Tiger did a double kill with a shotgun again. I mean, I'm trying to play against this narrative, but he just keeps getting these opportunities where he can get up close and just get these kills. I don't even know what I'm witnessing right now. They don't have to be worried about that one. Now, I do agree with you that rush strategy seemed like a little bit strange because oh my god wait what through the drone no of course you opened up the maverick never mind my bad I, I, I didn't pay attention to that at all and i mean i was gonna say as long as you're gonna keep swinging like that and flexi's just gonna test the control button there and that could be a good spot of course for flexi and trying to see if he can get himself an easy kill it's actually gonna drop middle and meeting it's gonna get a kill onto mezzi as well of course with wrist being open tiger with a long range headshot though that's a good job for him drader with the kill as well and high rock scott are just picking prima apart and all of a sudden it's only the Ozo left alive here in a 1v4 and he's not gonna be able to take it scott takes round number six Six. Prima are actually edging it inside of opening kills. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe we'll see Escarde finish strong. But with Flexi playing aggressively on the Warden, 
it could be a little bit of a problem. He's going to find Ooh. himself a second as well. But how has that not been called by Drater? Tiger as well going to be taken down and essentially a job done at this point for Prima. They just need to get themselves back into the site and watch Scarde chase these shadows and waste the rest of the round. Flexi, he's going to be able to pick himself up four kills here. Kai is going to try and join on in. Lurifax yoinks the ace. Everyone appearingly just running at Flexi inside of that round. Kai is so close. One of those where you just want to scream to pull the trigger because really is a lot closer than he realizes. Eventually will find the frag on through. Looks to stun out the player inside of kids. Gonna throw everything at that one. Drater looking to pressure vertically. But it's gonna be Tiger to find a kill over onto Flexi. We always get shut down on the clash. And well, a flawless round has been traded either way here. As both teams are showing that they don't want to lose this one. This is looking like it's gonna go the way of Prima unless Skada can have some individual plays. Cause look how spread out the Skada players are as well. Yeah, Scott, I don't have the fortune of numbers at the moment, so it is meaning that they're going to start getting picked off, and we can see a couple of kills coming in there. Tiger, he's going to be playing underneath, trying to make something happen. No one really giving themselves away, aside from a bit of a challenge onto the hatch. Flexi there, just getting a bit aggressive, but there's so many vertical angles to work with, and we always are. Well, he has a beautiful angle there. Didn't get to play Blitz exactly where... You would want to utilize splits the most, but still can make things work here. Tiger, if he knows that someone's off close inside a meeting, that's going to be a huge opportunity for him. It's actually going to be Warden as well. And with a backup, is he going to be able to rush this? He is actually going to be able to close out Flexi with a little bit of help, of course, from his teammates. But there we have it. it took them a minute and a half, though, to get rid of him. And there's a bit of stuff to slow him down. He's got some barbed wire to deal with. He knows there's going to be a player playing directly on the A-bomb chassis. Kai is going to be able to find a frag over onto head. So that could do something to give a bit of an opportunity for entry here. But Tiger finds the kill on the blitz. Lurifax has blinked his eyes. He's been left in a one versus four. Quickly makes it a one versus two. The blitz from Tiger swings on in. A stun from the shield and a desperate hip fire is all it takes. Another good man being thrown out by Flexi. Oh, with the bulletproof cam as well there, and he's not able to land at this angle with the SMG. He's going to have to try and push this, but he knows that both guns are most likely going to be pointing in his direction. And there you have a Flexi. Not Kai, it's barely even outside of the door, and he gets it. And we're going to OT here in Oregon. And uh, I guess this is just what the round's going to be, Ollie. Just the team's duking it out inside of Elbow. Bomb located by attackers. They're going to make us wait right up until the bitter end here to find any sort of resolution as we can hear shotguns going off. Messi finds one on the car. Tiger and not Kai coming in pretty big as well. Oh, look see at the two are actually caught inside a mute jammers. Oh, you hate to see it. Not Kai going to try and push on through. Messi finds himself down. Not Kai, he's got to go oh. big here. He grabs the down. All of this comes down to a wall. We want the frost mat. No, he always comes in. The frost mat takes the whole game. That was a one versus one. The pressure was on Doge Father, and it was relieved instantly by a single pog mat. It's Tedes, he's going to fall with another two in his pocket. So. Granny really looking to challenge and not giving anything up for free. Are all gonna find one as well. Back as a bit of a desperate trade, but look at how aggressively <laughs> we're seeing Granny take this one. They are not afraid of an engagement. Now Rara does find himself pretty low, but can still play his life inside of this security and maybe find another. No, the swing finally comes on in and shuts him down. It's done a lot to waste time, and it's done a lot to gain a lot of frags. Arthur dips down to the bottom of White Stairs, finds himself a freebie. Just about everything Ooh. is going to give Zer away there. There was a Grismot mine. There was the barbed wire. It's going to go for the Trident and test a blitz strategy here, it seems like, on Elbow. And we've seen this really grow in fruition here as a counter to the Elbow push, even with Flores being an option here. And with Harness playing, though, on the Clash, the Blitz is just going to try and force him, but Harness is playing this quite well. But Ghost is going to be injured behind him. So the teammate that he had to back him up, but Rava talking about backing up has all it takes. And Zer is going to be able to trade back too as well. And Harness is going to whiff some of his couple of his shots. Going to go down prone. I hope for Emperor to be able to shut this, but there are two players out there in blue. And this all of a sudden is down to Harness and the 1v2 playing on the Clash. 
two players outside in blue. And let's see if Hunters can do this. No, he won't. Zur cleans this one up for Kova in what was a little bit of a messy round here. Kova, however, they are flooded on through and it's left Rauer in the one versus three. Just going to be holding on to the angle. Going to try and force a plant out here. Finds one onto Mini. Grabs the planter in there. He's got one second to keep himself alive. He's going to get himself into the engagement. But time wins it out. Rawa, what a round there that you've been able to pull off. Playing to the clock. Getting the planter. Sloppy stuff again from Kova. Zer went fishing there. Let's see if Hanneso can go fishing here. And Zer does not know. And he's also lucky to get away with his life there. This was the one advantage that Hanneso could have had potentially. No flashbangs to boot. He doesn't have a kit either. Keep that in mind. He's going to have to try and go for this kill. He's going to try and fish for this now. But he knows that Zer's going to be playing this hard left. Zer's going to be waiting for it. And Hanneso is going to win it in a 1v2. Gonna need to slow things down. And Ghost with another kill as well, and with a double kill for Ghost, the Norwegian, and Hannes is always it's down to Auden after Clutch A's to play for the playoffs here. He's going to find his second. He's going to have to find three more, though this is all or nothing for Auden. The IGL Mr. Consistency himself for Kova. Let's see if he's able to do it. It's not going to be, and it's going to be ambush, ladies and gentlemen, to be the finish representative in the playoffs here. A huge congratulations to them. And meanwhile, the plant is going down under the cover of JTC. Is he going to be able to land his shots? Yes, he is. The plant is confirmed. C4 will miss. Rocket from inside of the vault now has a pretty tricky engagement on his hands. He has a live ping, oh. and he has the shot to take down jtc now bitto he's had a big round so far he's found himself two kills and a plant rocker doesn't look to be working off too much information gives the game away oh, hits his shots the boomer rocker hits the quad kill loads of time to disable that diffuser there's a big boost there for x and as they take round number one here initially here and it seems the push is going to be Strictly coming from the northeast side of the map as well, so with additional kind of take here from Trof on to Trophy Statuary. Far coming through here from Hosh, he's shooting into connector, but Jay Dudes is just punishing him for that, and it's just. It's almost like he can't believe it himself that he got that kill, but he did. It really is. JTC has the pressure on him now. He's one versus three, 45 seconds, half health. He's got goo mines to contend with, potentially information, really nicely. Takes down VML. Free fire there, just too much to deal with. Now, don't forget that J Dudes is pretty low. So, pending mm. what information is available here for X, and this is actually very doable here for JTC. He doesn't have any useful utility to help him with this endeavor, especially seeing as MeQ is just going to try and take that as a challenge. Gets a glimpse, lands his shots. Oh, Harold, very close there. See if the nade will land, but I think Hyperino's holding this angle instead. And he will actually directly hit him! Harold is trying to find that angle, but the Toxic Babe canister is going to cut off that line of sight and that bit of access. Ooh, how lucky do you want to get rotating through the vault like that? You've really got to think JTC is counting his lucky oh. stars there. Red Groove comes in. JTC swings at the right time. Deploys the final Toxic Bay. And decides I'm having a little bit of a swing. JDudes, he's got to try and do something. He gets tagged on the cross. Able to take <laughs> down Vitalin there. He had a yellow ping and he had a bit of information. Vitalin was always going to struggle to make his way back up due to the air jab as well. It's wasted a good little bit of time. And now we have an even firmer idea of where JDudes is coming from. Hosty, he doesn't need more than a few pixels to shut that one down. Miku has been able to push his way on into the site. He's actually got a line of sight to challenge onto JTC. He looks to try and go for the plant, but nobody is covering for Hoshti. He swings on through, finds the kill. That's the diffuser surrendered cold inside of Statuary. JDudes is not too far away from it, but he's unlikely to be able to pick it on up. Hoshti moves on through, finds the frag over onto JDudes, and now Rocker, a player that has stepped up in a big way throughout the course of the night, has a chance at one, but it is going to be an exit frag. Red Groove, he comes on through with that final kill. And a game that didn't look too easy at the start ends in a chaos win. They take Villa 7-4 here against Exxon.